Caroline, Caroline, uh, hi everyone, I'm finally back, it's good to be back, I hope you all are having a good week, I will be having an upload tomorrow probably, which is an update talking about life, I wanted to put up a video today darn it, because it's Tuesday, this is, we're going back to 5th gen, with the battle I had against, uh, again, the Tortuga, definitely an NU match here, he starts off with Probo Pass, I am starting off with my Rotom Fridge form, Probo Pass, I knew it was most likely just going to set up Stealth Rocks. Here we really see some of the huge uh, changes that 6th Gen brought into the game, because Probo Pass, being a Steel Rock type, would resist, um, for example, I have Shadow Ball on some of my Pokemon, or things like that, or Sucker Punch. It resists those things in 5th Gen, whereas in 6th Gen, they do neutral damage. Also, interestingly enough, Wigglytuff, in you, it's just a normal type. So I can bring in my, uh... Zwilus, which is a dark dragon type, and be able to hit it pretty hard, whereas if it were a fairy type, my dual stab would be doing not very much damage to it. So, um, yeah, Fitchin doing some inter interesting things there. Now, Wigglytuff is going to be annoying for just a little bit because it's such an adorable little puffball. It's going to keep on using Wish and Protect. That's okay. I have Qantas out here just to use the Fake Out and um, hopefully hit some things with Circle Throw. And he switches on into Muck, which is fine because we don't want Muck, we want Wigglytuff. Uh, and I was really hoping when they released Mega King of Shikon that when you use Circle Throw, that will switch out your opponent's Pokemon twice because it technically hits twice, uh, but it only switches them out once. That would be hilarious if it swapped out your opponent's Pokemon twice. Um, but predicting the Protect, I'm going to go ahead and bring in Anfini, and then go to for the Substitute, predicting another Protect or a switch out of some sort. A uh, Hustle Boosted Stab Crunch is going to do a buttload of damage. That is a, a verifiable, quantifiable amount. Buttload. If you guys look at the mechanics and do the math, it's going to equal a buttload. Uh, so we see that amount of damage drop down there, and knowing that he can't really love another one, he goes out into Probo Pass, which resists the crunch. Whereas in 6th Gen, man, I would have done, what, twice that amount of damage? I maybe would have been able to hit KO. However, since I uh, tricked him the Scarf earlier, he's actually faster than my Anfini. I predicted him to go for Thunder Wave, but I thought I'd be faster, so I kind of get paralyzed for no reason. Uh, Fire Fang just doesn't do that much because it's a Probo Pass. It only does neutral damage anyway. I was hoping for the flinch or the burn, though, and predicting another switch out because he's not going to stay in and keep going for Thunder Wave because he's locked in on it with the Choice Scarf. I decided to switch up to Outrage. Vigoroth, being pretty bulky with the Eviolite, is still basically 2 hit KO'd by it. Uh, unfortunately, I missed the second one because of Zwilus's Hustle ability, which lowers his accuracy of his moves. Just a little bit there in exchange for more power. But that's okay. Here I predicted a Brick Break or a normal type move. Going out into Grumpig will allow me to use Heal Bell to get rid of that paralysis on my Zwilus, as well as scout out what the rest of his moveset is. He decides to go right out into Wigglytuff, though, and that's okay with me because based on how Wigglytuff was taking those hits, I think it's physically defensive. Uh, so we're going to stay in here and go for some psychic type attacks. Uh, but I actually ended up clicking Focus Blast, I think, just because I was like, eh, if I hit it, I think I can kill it. But I didn't kill it, so it would have just been better off to go for the safe psychic attack, because psychic would have definitely been a 2-8 KO. Whereas Focus Blast, it's just so hard to hit those things. You really have to focus to hit a Focus Blast. Now, I don't want to risk missing a second Focus Blast, so we are going to finish it off with a Psychic right here, which is okay. Wigglytuff goes down. Yet another entrance of, of course, of if you use Focus Blast against Wigglytuff now, it'll be not very effective. It's just fun to see how those things change over time. Uh, I didn't know what to expect from Glalie. I thought he was going to set up some spikes, but he just goes straight for Crunch. And I see the Life Orb, and I was like, oh, well, I just wasted my uh, Grumpig there, because I was really expecting him to go for Crunch. But that's okay. You know, there are definitely worse ways that that could have happened. 
I knew that he was most likely going to switch out, and so I just went for a circle throw. I hit the Prolo Pass, which is great because it's four times effective. Able to take that thing down. He may have just been predicting me to go for Fake Out, which is the other play that I would have likely made there. That Kangash Gun is really weird. It has Outrage, Fake Out, Circle Throw, and Sucker Punch. Um, so kind of a utility Kangash Gun, really. It, it's really it's hard to play with. You have to predict a lot. But it's fun at the same time. And of course, Contus is the Australian airline that has a kangaroo as its mascot, if you guys were wondering about the nickname. So I'm able to hit a Blizzard here, thankfully. I really wanted to put some damage on this Vigoroth to stop him from going from slack offs over and over again. If I could put pressure on him, then I knew I could bring in Pikachu, outspeed, and finish him off with a Thunderbolt because I am holding the Light Ball item. And so I'm able to finish it off. Hooray! Don't have to worry about Vigoroth anymore. I really enjoy using Pikachu. Um, in lower tiers and in Ubers. I don't typically use it in OU for some reason, but if it's Ubers, I will probably be bringing a Pikachu just because of how much it outspeeds with this great coverage. But that being said, this is a specially based muck, and it just takes me right out with a Sludge Bomb. I was hoping Thunderbolt would do a little bit more than that. I was hoping for three quarters damage, but not quite there. Fortunately, my uh, Mystic Water Ceravic is definitely able to take it out with a Stab Waterfall. And then Golduck comes out, and here I go, haha, I am not Bandit, I am Mystic Water. So I take you down to about half HP with a double edge. He shows me the hidden power, I'm guessing it's Electric, just because of Golduck's coverage generally. You see Electric, a little bit more than Grass, I'd say. Especially since it gets Ice Beam. But, gonna bring back in Kangaskhan, whom I believe is... No, I still have Amphini. So I have Amphini and Kangaskhan left. I knew he was going to switch out right there, I remember thinking that. But I did not want to go for the circle throw in case he stayed in and hit me with a Scald or a Hydra Pump. Uh, and Feeny did not outspeed either of his uh, two remaining Pokemon, so I couldn't really risk that. And so he goes for the Ice Fang as I just Death Fodder and Feeny because I wanted to get another free Fake Out off. So now I'm going to bring back in Contus and go for another Fake Out. Again, I was fairly certain that he was going to switch, but I felt like I couldn't take that risk because if I just went for fake outs then I knew I had guaranteed damage whereas if I went for circle throws not only did it, was there a chance to miss but he was also faster than me so if he didn't switch he might just outright KO me. So since I did plan that out though I knew I'd have one more attack left and as long as this uh, final attack hits and goes first which Sucker Punch will go first I will win but he barely hangs on and I died in my own life or recoil. So. I, maybe I should have set up Entry Hazard somewhere in there, although I don't have anyone who could have set up Entry Hazards. But, you guys, it's great to be back. Thank you so much for your patience with my channel. I should be definitely rolling out the uploads more frequently again, Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed the battle. And um, for those of you guys participating in the May International Challenge League this weekend, good luck. I will be putting up a video talking about my team sometime this week as well. So, uh, oh, and if you guys participated in the April Friendly, uh, let me know your rank. I got 409. I was in the top 500 there out of over 11,000 participants, so I was really feeling myself there a little bit. But you guys have a great week, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye now.